Hello everyone, so here I am on my local Toge road, woefully ill-prepared to film today because I was trying to dual camera and not only did I forget some mounts, I also forgot my other camera. But alas, here we are to test out the JSP J160 Beams reverse lockout shifter. Last week I drove the Corolla on my regular commute to work back to back. The shifter was a lot different than mine so it took a little bit getting used to but it's been great so far on the street. And so here we are today to test this guy out in the heat of battle. Sorry about only the one camera but it'll definitely do for this toge test. Why don't we get started? Click goes the JSP drift button also. Hopefully you guys can hear me above the engine and the rattles and all the other Corolla noises. Let's slow down for this bicyclist. Drop a gear and disappear. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Not in this car. I keep touching the shift knob because immediately I notice something's rattling. Um, I may not have installed that shift knob correctly with the insert in it. It looks like there's still a little bit of moisture on the road so we got to be careful. It's actually really moist on the road right now. I'm really curious. It hasn't rained in a while, so I'm curious where this runoff came from. And it looks like we have a little bit of traffic. I appreciate when the, there's a uh, non-destructed driver on the road because if you guys have driven the, what is it, five down to SoCal, nobody knows or no one in California knows how to use the left lane. We're going to hit the brake because I know there's a hard corner here. Downshifted too late, but that's all right. How many people are walking around here? <laughs> We're going to try to keep a reasonable speed limit. I, you know, a lot of people ask me why I don't regularly toge. I mean, the biggest reason I try to keep 
really spirited driving off the streets, right? I'm a big advocate for skid pad, track days, open autocross. Skid pad and the autocross especially, very little money cost of entry for like a full day of hooning around. And then you don't have to worry about, you know, that guy taking pictures, there's like random people walking around, bicyclists. And we're gonna slow down because this is the residential area. We got a bicyclist in front of us. <clears throat> While we take this short intermission, Through this residential area, we'll kind of talk about the car. 1985 Toyota Corolla. Um, I am absolutely 16 valve for life. Uh, it's a uh, engine's built by myself. Um, yeah, Tomei pond cams. Heads professionally ported. I bought the head second hand in the heyday of Club 4HE from someone who lives in the south, like Georgia or something. And uh, it's funny, it got engraved, signed on the back by. Mr. Schubert, <laughs> whoever Mr. Schubert is. But yeah, three rib, big port, so <laughs> the lowest trim you can get, but dynoed at the racer's line in Concord, thank you, Neil. Uh, 120 wheel horse and then about 100 and some change uh, foot pounds, which doesn't sound like a lot, but if you know Corollas, Dynoing at 80 wheel horsepower. If you can break three digits in a Corolla wheel horsepower, that's like an accomplishment in itself in general. So, we should be almost out of this residential area. And yeah, I actually have a depowered rack there's a lot of uh, people who say like oh depowered terrible but you have to properly depower it I should have worn sunglasses today <laughs> properly depowered so take all the guts out of the rack out take all the pressure seals out because a poor feeling depowered rack is usually because you're fighting all the pressure seals that were supposed to hold pressure from the power steering fluid. So yeah, while excellent steering feel, while we hit this straight, why don't we talk about it? Excellent steering feel, um, but it requires a lot of muscle. So I think in American Toge there was a um, manual steering NSX and Suchia was like, man, this thing's great, but man, it's so t taxing for me to drive this thing. It really needs power steering. <clears throat> and if I could go back, I would absolutely keep the power steering on this car. Uh, I have a lot of customer cars that are fully loaded with power steering. And they're great. Steering feels excellent. It's a uh, variable power steering. So at higher RPMs, it reduces the amount of assist. So you get the you get like the full the full road feel at higher RPMs, and then in the parking lot you get your full assist. So you're not you know cranking the wheel over. Get some forearms like me <laughs> to try to parallel park. A lot of blind corners on this one. Blind corners. Gravel, runoff. Oh, that's, I mean, a lot of reasons why I advocate keep this stuff off the street. You don't know, bicyclist, pedestrian, animal, there's animals here around the corner, you don't know. And you absolutely should not be driving even like eight tenths on the street. Absolutely not, totally irresponsible.
If you see me in truck videos, I'll do this. My palms get tired because I grip the steering wheel too hard and uh, I forget to breathe. I'll take a corner and then like not hold my breath through it. Sunlight in the face is not the business. Today was definitely a sunglasses driving day. Woefully ill prepared. See that rock slide area ahead? When we've had storms in the past, <coughs> there's definitely been rock slides where like sides of the mountains have uh, you know, gone all over the major highways here in California. I know there's some hard blind corners coming up that'll uh, trip you up. And then getting really close, there's definitely a ravine that people have fallen into. So, again, So my favorite section should be coming up. There's that 3-2. I don't know why I rev match upshift. There's gonna be a great torture test for that JSP shifter. And we're gonna go 3-2 right here, hard brake. Excellent, excellent. Go up to three. It's gonna get tighter towards the end with more rocks. Right here, right here. Hopefully that camera holds up. Oh, gotta watch out for traffic. I know I saw the wheel, but that's my anxiety. <laughs> one last one. Oh, never mind. Spoke too soon. But the three, two, every time has been great so far. I don't usually drive this road. I've driven a lot in the past, so we still gotta be mindful of uh, debris and stuff in the road. Like I can see dirt right there. That'll definitely throw you into the cliff, so. And there's a ravine on my left. All right. And here we are at the finish line. I know the AE86 is the downhill specialist, but why don't we special try the uphill? Join me, won't you? Beautiful downshift. I'm gonna break and power out. If you guys think I'm pussyfooting it, I am, so I'm sorry. <laughs> we got a corner coming up. I'm gonna break hard. Ah, oh, I missed the timing on that one. That's all right. Over. 
beautiful. I've driven this road many times. I have to say, that's the first time where I've been excited by the uphill section. Um, I want to say the shifter has a lot to do with it. I've always loved the shift feel of the J160. Like how, how buttery smooth it is, but you know, until this JSP shifter like that, probably couldn't have done that in the past. Third, we're gonna break. Beautiful, beautiful. Very confidence inspiring. Very confidence inspiring. Why don't we try to run the downhill one more time? Hopefully we beat some of that traffic. Second thing that I totally regret is that I took my AC out of this car and it's very hot. And it's not just me. <laughs> Let's find a good place to turn around. One of the things, you know, you, people talk about power and you know, ITVs are all these power adders or whatever. Reliability, look at these temps. Don't even touch 100 after all that. Yeah, people always forget about reliability mods like heat management. Totally key. The car's not going to perform if it's overheating all the time, right? Perfect. We will turn around in a safe place. I am absolutely pumped about this shifter. I used to have to really think like, er, second, but <clears throat> you can, now you can just like slap that guy, or I guess slap it this way. On that 3-2 downshift. We're gonna run that downhill one more time. Hopefully we don't get too penisy. I mean, cocky. Break for this blind corner. How long I've been speaking English, I can't pronounce blind. Blind. We got another blind corner coming up at the 20 sign, so we're gonna break hard. Rip it in second. tight gear spacing isn't exactly the best for this tight tight toge course but still very good three two no problem no problem we gotta slow down probably break too early there but again three two no problemo break again I know I'm sawing at the wheel. Give me a break, you guys. <laughs> and then we're gonna get ready. Hard break. We gotta watch out. We got someone on the uphill. voice through all the excitement. Gotta slow down. I think we've done plenty of 3-2 shifts during this excursion. I love everyone. My forearm's killing me already. Watch out for traffic. Power out of the turn and we 
are at our finish line.